There is a lot of ways how to build a hybrid boat. The most common is to install an electric motor in line with your existing engine, or connect it directly to the shaft and has a separate generator what will charge your main propulsion battery on demand. Originally I was thinking about that second option with Tesla drive units connected to the shaft and high voltage battery would charge from the sun or marine generator. But the problem is what there is not a lot of people were trying to install any of these systems on old power boats. Sailboats, yes, uh, but we don't like sailboats uh, for a list of reasons, uh, so it's a topic for another video. Uh, to get more data to actually make this swap possible, I decided to install a small electric motor from Electric Unicycle directly to my shaft. I have a separate video where we're actually going through the process, so you can check it. Thankfully, our boat had a huge discount because one of the gasoline engines was overheated and required at least head resurfacing, so there was like a really big uh, work required for this engine. Uh, because of that, instead of trying to revive this 40 years old monster back to life, I decided to install an electric motor directly to the drive shaft. Uh, by the way, entire installation process with all batteries etc. costed only a fraction of what it would need to spend on that old Crusader. So after cruising with that current setup for more than a year, I can confidently say that well, this is possible. So my current electric motor can output maximum about two, maybe like two and a half in a short time and can stable output about 700 watts without overheating. So how you can see, it's not powerful motor at all, but it was nice proof of concept. But what's more important is speed what we were able to achieve while we were using that power. So at two, two and a half kilowatt of output, I was able to achieve a bit more than two knots. Uh, while at 700 watts, but usually can hold stable one and a half knot. You can say that well, it's not a lot, and I agree, uh, but again, it gives me an idea of how much power realistically we need to move to our ideal setup. For our boat and our setup, we see ideal speed if is like four or five knots. This is the most efficient speed for our semi-displacement hull. Going faster and we will burn too much fuel. So realistically, I expect what we will burn about 10, 15 kilowatt. Uh, per hour going that speed. So when we're talking about 10-15 kilowatts per hour, this is where we are talking about only going on one engine. If you go on both of the engines, the load on each of them will be lower, but the total amount of power still would be like roughly the same, maybe actually a little bit more. And this is where my main idea of having two Tesla drive units it also could be like Nissan Leaf uh, powertrain or Chevy Bolt or you name it, pretty much any electric car, started to have a lot of problems. So first of all, new marine genset cost a lot. So we've been on several boat shows and usually new diesel marine genset cost about 1000 per one kilowatt. So 20 kilowatt generator, uh, which is exactly how much I perhaps would need to be able to cover demand on my electric motors, will cost about 20,000 alone. But again, I started to be concerned about how reliable this generator could be. So if something goes wrong, we will stay without any power. So we are talking at this point about two generators when each of them should output about 10 kilowatt each, ideally 15 kilowatt. So both still can go somewhere if one goes offline. Price only for generators at this point goes up to 30,000 minimum. And the problem is we need the brand new one because we don't want to refurbish the old one. So then don't forget what the high voltage battery is not actually stored DC current, it is actually AC. So all these kilowatts has to be converted to DC current. So we are talking about really big AC to DC charger converter. So it could be easily goes around another 10, 15,000 uh, out of our budget. Plus if we go to take drivetrain from Tesla, I would need to hack the drive uh, the drivetrain itself because I cannot reuse the whole car electronics because it's too many components which I'm not going to use. So there's already ready to use kits on the market so they can cost about 8,000 per unit. So it's about another 16,000 and we are still talking about the prototype. And we even didn't count the most expensive part of the conversion is a high voltage battery. 
wires, control panels, etc., and like a bunch of like other small components which you still would need to require. <sighs> but what if I tell you what there is an option what I can achieve the same 10 to 15 kilowatts output on the electric motor for a fraction of the cost. Actually, almost for free. I never thought about Toyota Prius as a donor for my project, but I accidentally found one video on YouTube where a guy was showing new Gen 5 Toyota Prius. And I started to get deeper into that rabbit hole, and now I'm pretty confident to say what perhaps Prius is your best bet if you want to swap to a hybrid boat stop. By the way, if anyone still don't understand all things what we were discussing earlier, I hybrid setups. Pure electric boats doesn't make any sense, at least with the current technology. So let's give you numbers. So Gen 5 can output roughly 220 horsepower, while my current Crusader could output 230-270 horsepower when they were like new. Again, nobody knows for sure how many horsepower in my specific model, but let's say 250 horsepower. So it's somewhere in the middle. If it would be a big block Chevy, it would be about 350 horsepower. So you can see already what Gen 5 is not what that far in terms of horsepower, but you can logically say, but how long the Prius can output these horsepower? And again, you will be right here because not for a long time, of course. But it's not important because if I want to go fast and burn hundreds of like liters of fuel per hour, I would just install another big badass engine like Crusader or you know any other big block, uh, or maybe even diesel one. Who you know, who knows? We are talking about efficiency here at five knots, and uh, has this extra amount of power in case of bad weather, extra current something happened, it's really nice. So having a Prius Gen 5 is really tempting, but even if I will go to auction and get one, we are talking about 10 to 15,000 per car, what already have a gasoline engine, electric motor, it actually has two, but I will simplify everything right now, and a big battery, about 20 kilowatt hours. I would be able to reuse everything from the car, as long as Prius ECU think what it still is a car, which is possible to do, uh, rather than going with a Tesla or uh, Nissan Leaf, etc. But before committing thousands of dollars into this project, what if I was wrong? What if my calculations are still wrong? I started to do research and turns out what pretty much all generations of Prius before had more or less the same horsepower output, way less than 5, of course. So. If I want to prototype cheap, I need to go with the most reliable and the most affordable model currently on the market, which is, of course, Gen 2. So l let's call it our final test setup before we'll commit to go with the Gen 5 Prius drivetrains. Let's go deeper into numbers. So Gen 2 has 1.5 Atkinson cycle engine, which will seep fuel compared to Crusader, which we have right now. It can output about 76 horsepower, which is equivalent of 57 kilowatts, which should be enough to move my boat alone at about 7 to 9, 7 to 9 knots, which is a good if it's true, again, because it's only on paper and it's only calculations. But it also has an electric motor what can output up to 50 kilowatts of pure power, and we're talking about really interesting setup. Of course, under load, this electric motor output will be closer to 10 to 15 kilowatts in best case, but it's exactly how much I need for my current test. I want to see how fast we can travel with we are using about 10 to 15 kilowatts of energy. The only downside here is what it has really tiny 1.5 kilowatt high voltage battery, which I really hope we would be able to change by installing pretty big 70 kilowatt lithium uh, iron phosphate monster. Again, 70 kilowatt is, is really big. It's way bigger than even 20 kilowatt on Gen 5. And in theory, it would be even easier to do compared to Gen 5 because spoofing uh, signals on Gen 5 way harder compared to Gen 2. So, yeah, we will see how it's possible, but uh, I hope if we will spoof signals on BMS of Gen 2, 
it, it's going to be possible, but it's task for the future. Don't forget what this drivetrain, and we are talking about like any previous drivetrain, Gen 2, Gen 5, etc. You also work as a gen set for our boat and can easily output like roughly about 7 kilowatt constantly. And it sounds actually amazing because everything is in one tiny package and it's already designed to be as efficient as possibly could be. By removing Big Crusader and current gen set, I easily can compensate the mass by bigger battery bank, so the balance of the boat will be actually intact. And the most exciting part of that swap is the cost. I believe going with a Gen 2 is going to be the most affordable way to do a hybrid swap at all. Uh, it's possible to get a Gen 2 in a good condition for about 5,000. And if you're talking about auctions, maybe even less, maybe like less than $1,000 sometimes. The only problem with the Gen 2 is age. So most of them are really more than 20 years old and get a low mileage one could be a quite a problem because most of them has like three, 400,000 on their odometers and it's close to the end of their life cycle. Of course, it's not a problem for me because I just want to prototype and collect more data to choose what path of the conversion I want to choose and which one is the correct. And the most observant of you might say now, wait, what about your solar energy and your solar panels? And this is the most exciting part. I will record a separate video about solar performance, so check our channel and don't forget to subscribe on it so you won't miss this video. But this is why I want to install a big high voltage battery in the first place. Because we can store extra energy while we are not going anywhere, like we are not going anywhere right now. We can generate about 15 kilowatt per day with a current setup. So if we stay somewhere for a week, let's say, uh, we have a full battery at the end of the week and those 70 kilowatt per hour, which I'm planning to install, can provide roughly 7 hours of silent cruising at 4 to 5 knots. Again, depends on our future consumption, which we are planning to know pretty soon. Then after 7 hours, drop the anchor, stay for another week or so and go free again. But let's say we need to go faster longer. Our gasoline motor is always ready and can provide power at any moment. I can try to tell you how cool it could be, but I believe the best way is to show it to you. So please don't forget to subscribe on our channel, and if you don't want to miss the process, check our Patreon if you want to see all updates in real life and be a part of the process. For a small fee of only $5 per month, you would be able to have access to all updates in real life, but also all cut files and technical information you might need. And again, thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Stay tuned.